Hi, I'm Zach Moore, and this is my top five alien movies. Number five, District 9. Basically 20 years ago, aliens appeared over Johannesburg, South Africa. The government had to take them in and take care of them. They live in this ghetto called District 9, and the government just takes advantage of these aliens trying to use their technology. They just want to use them to help themselves, and that's what humans do. How do your weapons work? <laughs> And District 9 does what science fiction does best, which is take a socially relevant issue, dresses up in a sci-fi setting, and get you a new perspective on things that are going on in the world at large. And even though the special effects are great, they don't take precedence over the story. They're merely a tool to help them tell the story. And that's what makes this one of the best sci-fi films of the decade, and right up there in my top five. Number four, Men in Black. Stars Will Smith and the height of his summer blockbuster popularity and Tommy Lee Jones. They're a perfect foil for each other. Tommy Lee Jones is the old grizzled veteran that knows his way around the, the alien earth relations and Will Smith is his new rookie coming in here. He represents the viewpoint of the audience. It's a common accepted theme for the men in black to be dealing with the aliens as a spaceport and all these ridiculous things and we're introduced through it through Will Smith's character and Tommy Lee Jones is his guide. There's a lot of creativity in the aliens here. There's like a squid alien and a roach alien and a, a talking dog alien. There's a guy that's head gets blown off and it comes back and some great performances in this film carried really by Will Smith and Tom Lee Jones interaction. It's a funny movie. It's a comedy first and foremost, but it takes a sci-fi and it takes a lot of the stereotypes and uses them to its advantage and be like, aha, isn't this funny? This is what these movies do. Unfortunately, kind of tarnished by a less than quality sequel, but the original still stands as one of the best sci-fi comedies ever made. <laughs> Number three, The Day They Stood Still, the original 1951 version not the Keanu Reeves version. Stay away from that at all costs. A common conversation point when it comes to aliens is why don't they just land on Earth in Washington DC, come out of their spaceship, reveal themselves to the government, everything would be great. Well, that's exactly what happens in this movie and it shows you exactly why that's a bad idea. Being in the 50s, it has some Cold War overtones and undertones. The alien's message in this film is a bit contradictory. Basically, it's, you guys are gonna destroy yourselves, and if you do, we're gonna destroy you. So, the day that Earth still also has one of the most iconic figures in science fiction, which is the robot Gort. Klaatu, Brada, Nikto, it's part of the sci-fi uh, culture, if you will. And he's just a silent assistant to Klaatu, the main alien, but he's memorable, he's super powerful, and it just goes to show, even though it's old and black and white, it doesn't matter. The story transcends that, and that's what's the most important. And failed attempts at remaking and updating it just, just don't work. So just appreciate the original for what it is, one of the best science fiction films of all time. Number two on my list, Alien. Directed by Ridley Scott, it has a lot of his visual flair, much like Blade Runner, it's this gritty, future, realistic world. And one of the things that sets this film apart is it's not a group of explorers like Star Trek or a group of scientists like in a lot of sci-fi films. These are just some working class people on a spaceship, get a job assignment, gets in over their head, and it turns into a horror film in space. It basically combines the horror and the sci-fi genre in a very successful way because it just builds up suspense. First there's a distress call, then they go to a planet and there's some eggs and they don't know what's gonna come out of the eggs. And the alien continues to evolve throughout the film so you never know what it's gonna look like. It kind of blends in with the ship. It's very scary. The cast of this film was very impressive as well. You have Sigourney Weaver, Tom Skerritt, Ian Holm, John Hurt. It's a very seasoned, older cast. You wouldn't see this in a film today. You'd probably see a bunch of young 20-somethings getting slashed up by an alien and cared more about the gore. But they care about the performances, the story, and the suspense. Because in space, no one can hear you scream. Number one, science. The main driving point of the story is that aliens invade Earth. But instead of focusing on this fantastical aspect, it chooses instead to focus on a small rural family led by Mel Gibson, of course, playing a widower, as he always does. He's going through a crisis of faith. He's actually a former preacher. It's very interesting, this theme to faith and belief and 
family throughout this movie, and that's the core of the movie, this family relationship. Director M. Night Shyamalan is a student of Alfred Hitchcock who realizes the suspense is the most frightening thing of all. What you don't see scares you more than what you do see. It's all up to the imagination. It also has the feel of an old Twilight Zone or Outer Limits episode in that there's a huge fantastical event going on worldwide, but you stay focused on this one family, you get invested in them, their characters, their relationships with each other. I mean, you really could care less about the alien invasion going on. You care about what's gonna happen to these four people. Some might find the resolution of the film a little bit, eh. I personally love it, think it's all well done, ties everything together, along with the themes of faith, family, forgiveness, really drives it to the top and makes it my number one alien film of all time.